did I miss that one? Got you that time. It's a nice one too. Big one. Came back for it. Holy smokes, he's got that thing way down there. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode down here in the basement bait shop doing a little rod building. I've got some time to finish off a rod blank that I've been working on for a while now. I find that I like to have my rods built and ready to go for that time when I do need them. I've got them versus maybe when I go to a, you know, go on a trip and I break a rod or I lose a rod over the side of the boat or I realize I just want to have more of a certain blank. I feel like then I'm rushed to build. So when I've got some time to finish up rods, I like to sit down, spend a little bit of time building. And today I'm working on the MHX MB843. This is one of my absolute favorite rod blanks that MHX makes. It is an extremely versatile rod. I mean, this is almost one of the, the most basic common sizes that you find in rods. It's a seven foot, three power, medium heavy, fast action rod. Uh, I personally love this blank for throwing top waters. I love it for spinner baits. I throw it sometimes with a swim jig. You can do some light pitching and flipping with it. Very, very versatile rod. There are uh, very few baits you can't work on this efficiently. And because of that, I like to have a lot of these built and ready to go. Because what I find is a lot of times I go to a tournament and maybe I get on a really good top water bite. And I have three, four, five top water baits rigged up. So I need a bunch of these. And, and I'm always, I always feel like I'm working on these. And I have uh, very, very little issue working on very versatile rods. Meaning if I'm going to spend time working on a rod, I generally prefer to do it on a versatile rod like this MB843 or the N NMB873, the NMB874. Rods that I use a whole pile of versus maybe a specialty rod like a big swim bait rod or a hair jig rod. I love having those, don't get me wrong, but I always just feel like I want a bunch of these in stock. So I'm finishing this one up. I've had this one glued up for a while. Uh, you can see I've got red handles on this. These are the wind grips. I really enjoy uh, using the wind grips for a couple of reasons. One, I find that they they hold better in my hand in wet conditions. And as you know, most of the time our hands are wet throughout the course of the day, whether it's raining, there's dew on the ground, maybe you're catching fish, maybe you're just, you know, reaching into the live well, whatever it is, the wind grips really do stick in my hands really well. So that's one of the things I love putting on my rods anytime I'm building. Um, I also want to point out here that these are red handles. I get a lot of people asking me why I have so many different colored rods in the boat. If you come look at the front deck of my boat, a lot of times you'll see six different colored handles, a bunch of different thread work. And to me, this is all color coding. This is so that I can efficiently find the rod that I'm looking for in the boat as fast as possible. Now, it's not uncommon for me to have 10, 15 rods out on the deck. And when they're all piled up and you're trying to find a specific bait, sometimes you jumble around. Now, in this case, I know that this rod is going to be rigged with either, for me, for the most part, a topwater or a spinnerbait. If I've got several of them rigged, it really brings my eyes directly to them. I can grab it very quickly in the boat. And I know that sounds kind of anal, but the truth is, throughout the course of the day, I guarantee you that gives me an extra 15, 20 casts throughout the day, which can lead to one or two or a bunch of additional fish catches. And anything I can do that makes me more efficient in the boat, I really like to do. So the handles, what I use the handle color for is to tell me specifically uh, what type of rod it is. So a blue handle is going to be a flipping rod. Black handles are going to be, um, really, they're going to be more geared to, towards my spinning stuff or heavy, heavy flipping. If I've got gray handled, those are going to be more of my blended series rods. So my crankbaits, my chatterbaits, things like that. It just really breaks it down easily. And then within each handle, I then have various threads that I use. So I've got three or four different flipping rods that I really like to use. Based on the power of those rods, the threading will go from light blue to dark blue or even to the point of being black. So I know as soon as I grab the handle, I grab a blue handle, I go, okay, I want the darkest thread I've got. I know right what it is. It's a very easy, simple system for me. 
not saying it works for everybody, but it is something that I can really uh, tailor to myself when I'm building my rods versus, you know, before I was building my own rods way, way back in the day, I was throwing St. Croix tournament legends. Those are all blue rods. Every rod looks the same. So it was really frustrating to me where I'd go pick up a rod and realize it wasn't the right one. And real quick off the bat, I realized that that was going to be something that I loved to do when it came down to building my own rods. So I'm going to show you a couple of fish catches of this rod in action while I continue to thread up the guides. I'll throw you, I'll show you how to thread the guide as well because that's something I commonly get questions of. Very simple process. It's something that you should know how to do even if you don't want to build a whole rod because you can easily repair a single guide as well. So I'm going to get back to this. I'm going to let you watch a couple of fish catches and then I'll show you how to do a guide. That looked like a good one. That's a decent one. This current is ripping. Come here, we're just gonna bring you in here. Probably a two and a half. Nice river smallmouth. Good healthy fat fish. Right around two and a half pounder. Eating the old hula popper. came up and showed yourself. Oh, what do we got? Nice old bass. Look at that one. That other one hit it twice as hard as this big guy. Look at that one, guys. Let's get this one in the boat. That's a nice smallmouth, guys. Holy smokes. That is one of the biggest river smallmouth I've caught in a long time. And he just came up, just sucked that thing in. We gotta measure that one. Look at that fish. <clears throat> what a beautiful fish. Guys, having the right topwater rod is such, is such an important thing. As I mentioned in the last fish catch, I think it's crucial to have the right rod for the techniques that you're using. This MBA 43 is a very versatile rod, but it's my favorite topwater blank that I use. And we're building this one right now. And as I said earlier, I was gonna show you how to put a guide on, how to thread it on. So I wanna walk you through the process. In this case, 
I mean, this is the double foot first running guide going up, the first double footed guide. Uh, and I figured I would use white thread, even though I generally do not use white thread, uh, just so hopefully you guys could see it on the blank. Maybe I'll leave it that way. Maybe I'll cut it off and redo it in black, which is how I'd normally do it to keep everything consistent, like I said before, with my color coding. But you never know. Maybe I'll use it, leave it white so that you guys can see me using it in future videos. But what I do is I apply some heat to the feet of the guide. And I'm going to stick this just in a rod tip uh, glue stick, as you can see I've got here. I'm just going to stick both feet on it, get a little bit of glue, and then I'm going to heat it just to get rid of some of those little ends. I'm going to go ahead. I've got my rod tip centered how I want it. And I'm going to do my best to put that perfectly even. Looks very good. I've got my china marker showing me where I want to put my my guide. So we're good to go. Now we can adjust the guides a little bit after we have the thread on, but as long as you know you're roughly where you need to be, won't be a problem to adjust. At this point, I'm going to take the white thread and I'm going to start, it doesn't matter which side you start on with this guide, but I'm going to start right at the top of the foot of the top foot for this guide. Now the first wrap, I, I want to go away from the direction that I want to wrap. So in this case, you can see my thread is on on this side of my thread coming up from the rod wrapper. So I'm gonna do one wrap away, and then I'm gonna cross over the line and do three wraps in the direction that I wanna go. So one, two, so that's three, and I go right over the foot of the guide. At this point now, we can start our wrapping. Now the first several wraps, all we're gonna to try to do is lock in our initial wrap. You wanna make sure that your thread is continuing to build towards the guide and that it's not, you're not creating uh, any sort of overlapping because that'll create some issues, at least more cosmetically than anything. But in this case, we're just going around it enough so that we can lock in that tagline. Now I've got a little bit of space you can see there, but we can clean that up. So I've just wrapped about four wraps all the way around. I'm going to remove my tag end now. I'm just gonna cut it off, leave a little bit, but not much. I don't know what that is, maybe a 16th of an inch. And now I'm just going to continue wrapping towards the direction that I want to go. But in this case, I'm going to take my burnishing tool and just bump in that outside first couple of wraps. And now we're just going to continue to wrap it. Now I'm going to put my hand under it. Let's see if I can do this. Hopefully it focuses. I know sometimes it doesn't want to focus on this. Just so you guys can see, I'm just slowly wrapping. Now, you'll get much quicker at this, uh, but I'm doing it more at a pace where hopefully you guys can watch it, see what's going on. And we're gonna wrap this so that it's like two thirds to three quarters of the way to the point where you want it. Just continually making sure that it's stacking properly. You can use your hand to guide it if, if that makes you feel more comfortable. Like I said, this does not feel super natural to me because I'm Got one hand underneath that's hopefully guiding it. So I'm just gonna continue to go a little bit more. You can see generally the line just kinda wants to stack itself right in place. And we're just gonna keep going, but you just wanna make sure that it's there. So I've got, I would say I'm about uh, two thirds to three quarters of the way there. Now I'm gonna stop on the back of the blank and I'm gonna put my pull through. Now the pull through is what we use to clean up our threading and pull the tag end back under the thread so you can't see it. So I'm going to wrap that, not wrap it, I'm going to pull it up under the thread as it comes up from our rod wrapper. So now that I've got it under, I'm just going to wrap right over that. Now this is just one that I've made, just a bead with some uh, braided line. You want to make sure you use braided line that does not leave like threads or anything. And we can clean all of this up, but I'm just gonna continue to wrap until I've gotten to the point now where I wanna end. You can see there's like a little bit of an end on the foot. So that's where I'm going to. I think I've got, uh, we'll do one more wrap. Okay, so then we're gonna stop right at where my pull through is. And I'll put my finger on top of my thread to create a little bit of tension. Now what I'm gonna do is take the tension off the thread, which is why my hand is holding the thread so that 
Uh, it does not release the threading we just did. I'm gonna cut my thread, so now I've got a tag end, and I've got a loop from the pull through. I like to take a pair of tweezers and just come up through the loop, grab my tag end and pull it back through the loop. Now that my tag end is through the loop, I can take my finger off the thread, and now I'm gonna pull my loop on my pull through tight. Once I've got it tight, I can let go of the tag end. Now in this case, we don't wanna pull that whole tag end through. We want a nice clean threading underneath the thread work we did. So I'm gonna cut it off right above our pull through. Then I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure again on the thread, and I'm just gonna pop the pull through out. And you can see, hopefully you can see that, our tag end is now tucked underneath our thread work. Now I'll just take the burnishing tool and I can clean it up a little bit, get rid of some of these gaps. The white really shows any imperfections, but you can see this turned out just fine. And that's how you do it. So at that point, we've got our top thread done. I'll do the same thing for the bottom end all the way up the rest of the guide. Pretty simple process, and at that point, then we'll just lock it in with our two-part um, epoxy. Let it dry overnight, and we'll have a rod good to go. All right, so I just finished doing all the thread work. As you can see, it's all the way done, all the way up. Looks great. I decided to keep the one uh, white thread wrapping that I did for the video. It reminded me that this is the rod I made for this Build the Catch video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to put this in the drying rack and put some epoxy on it and get it ready to go so I'll have it finished by tomorrow morning. If you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you check out some of the other Build to Catch videos that I've done. All of the rods that I use on a regular basis, I'm doing Build to Catch videos on. So I show you how to do it. I show you all the components. In this case, the components for the MB843 I'll put right here for you guys as well as in the video description so that you can build to the exact specifications using the same components and the same measurements that I build each of these rods. So it's an easy process for you. Go to mudhole.com, all the model numbers you can order right there. If you have questions, they have a ton of resources on their website, their YouTube channel, the customer service line, they are extremely helpful and they can walk you through the rod building process. I think it's something you'd probably enjoy. So if you have a little bit of an inkling to give it a try, this is probably a good time to do it. And you can build the exact same rods that I am using. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed these Build to Catch videos, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned. We'll have a new tips video coming out tomorrow. I'm going to get back to epoxying this.